Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359 0808 5150 610 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Shall we pray? Our Father, we bless you for your help once again, bringing us together with your people over this program, Living Seed. Our Lord, we ask that your living seed will be cast again on the grounds of our lives. And Lord, we want you to watch over it, water it, and let it produce fruit meant for eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. We give God praise for being with you on this program once again today. We thank God for how he has led us over the past several weeks looking at spiritual warfare, especially as we have been considering the Christian armor. And if you look at all that we have shared all along, while we talk about the belt of truth, we talked about the breastplate of righteousness, we talked about the shoes of the gospel. We talked about the shield of faith. And we talked about the helmet of salvation. All these are the defensive weapons to protect ourselves. To keep ourselves secured even while we fight. Yet there are the offensive weapons of our warfare. Which we want to introduce to you uh, today. The offensive weapons of our warfare. And with that, we'll be finishing the components of the Christian armor and we'll be looking at the weapons of our warfare. Now, the scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, verse 4, verse 5. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, we want to say that the weapons that God had given us to fight, they are not natural. And they are not weak, beggarly weapons. They are weapons that are sure of securing victory for us at any time and in any point. So by God's grace today, we are going to take the last uh, uh, scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17 and verse 18. And we will move on to now consider the offensive weapons of our warfare. What are the weapons that God has placed in our hands with which to, to deal with the powers of darkness and to deal with the opponents of our faith. And I pray that as God places all this privilege on your hands, you may use them effectively, that you may war a good warfare, not boxing as, as beating the air, but fighting to win. That at the end of your race, you might be able to say also like Brother Paul, I have run the race and I have fought the good fight. May God help you also. To be able to look back on your pilgrimage here on earth and say, Indeed, thank God who caused us to triumph. Th thank God who giveth us the victory, even though the battle was fierce. I'm trusting that God will help us in Jesus' name. Please turn your Bibles along with us to Ephesians chapter 6. And let's read verse 17 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 17 and 18. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, why we are pressing on, on the weapons of our warfare, the offensive weapons. Here we find God placing a sword on our hands, the sword of the Spirit. 
And the sword of the Spirit, the Bible said, is the word of God. Now, you will notice that when we dealt with the issue of the belt of truth, we also discovered that the word of God is the belt of truth. But in that sense, we are using the word to remind ourselves what is the truth to protect ourselves. Now, you'll notice also that when we're talking of the shield of faith, we said faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Again, we realize that the word of God there provides us faith as a protective element. Now, you remember when we were discussing about the word of our testimony as a means of dealing with the devil. We said you don't have to keep quiet while the devil pumps his own ideas, his own dreams, his own lies into your heart. You need to talk back to the devil. There again, we are using the word of our testimony to reaffirm our position, to reaffirm our inheritance, and to tear the devil off. Yet, God is placing in our hands a sword, the word of God, as the sword of the spirit, with which we deal with the powers of darkness. And just to take that in connection with other weapons of our warfare, the word of God says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now it looks to me as if in spiritual warfare, we are to carry out the battle actually in the place is the place of prayer. Now most of the time you won't see the devil physically running after you. But right there in the spirit realm he is at work. So the word of God said you must pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Now, let's now take our scripture and look at some of the weapons that God has provided for us. I started by talking about the sword of the spirit. Uh, in order to take them all together, I would like to look at the sword of the spirit as a weapon of our warfare. I would like to look at the weapon of praise as a weapon of our warfare. I would like to use the um, look at the name of Jesus as a weapon of our warfare. I would like to look at the blood of Jesus as a weapon of our warfare. And I would like to look, look at binding and loosing as a weapon that God had given to us. I'm praying that God will grant us grace even today in Jesus' name. Now, please turn your Bibles very quickly into uh, the book of Psalms, Psalm 149. Psalm 149. We would like to start from there. Praise the Lord. Psalm 149. Can you look at... Uh, let's start from verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. Or maybe from verse 1. Let's read it from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him who made him. Let the children of Israel of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. And let them sing praises unto him with the timbre and harp. For the Lord take pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the nations and punishments upon the peoples. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with the fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor of all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. We want to say from this scripture that of course I like to start it from verse 9. The Bible says this honor of all his saints. Now the honor of dealing with the devil, the honor of pushing down the enemy, the honor of binding the kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron, the honor of executing the written judgment, the honor of using the double-edged sword in our hand, the honor of singing praise as a means of battling for God. All this honor, the Bible says all saints have it. So while we are dealing with the weapons of our warfare, I would like to say very briefly that there is none of you that is denied the privilege of using any of these weapons. Now these weapons are available to every saint, every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to be 
old in the Lord before these weapons become operative in your life. And you don't have to have attended a seminary or a college of theology. And you don't have to have known all the theological jargons before you can use any of these weapons. The ordinary Christian on the street who is having a functional relationship with the Lord Jesus is having this honor of binding the devil. The Bible said the least of us in the kingdom were even greater than John the Baptist. So I want you to know that whether you are born again yesterday or you are born again for the past 10 years or you have been born again the past 50 years, this honor uh, God has given to all his saints. The honor of winning the battle for Jesus. The honor of pushing down the devil, of binding him and of pushing him out, of casting him out. God had given it unto every one of us. All I'm saying here is this. Even the offensive weapon of our warfare, God had given us the right into it. Of course, you may not be able to operate these weapons at the same level with everybody. It depends on your level of experience. It depends on how much sensitive you are, even to the battle itself. But I like to say, whether you have used your weapon or not, you have that weapon. Whether you leave your own weapon and continue to beg others to come and fight for you, well, it's your own business. Whether you lose, I mean, you keep your weapon of prayer, your weapon of using the name of Jesus, and you go about lining up on a prayer line and say, somebody should come and be praying for you, somebody should come and help you drive out your demon. That is your own business. But as far as God is concerned, we all have this honor. All I'm saying here is this, that every child of God is equipped enough to do this battle. Every one of us. Of course, there are pastors, there are overseers, there are men that God has placed over us. There are some that their anointing may look very, very much serious than yours. But I want to say to you, it's a matter of growth. It's a matter of exercise of your spirit. It's a matter of how close you are to the Lord. That you yourself, you can descend between good and evil. And a weapon you have never used before, you will never be used to it. So what I will want to say in the course of dealing with the weapons, the offensive weapons of our warfare is this. Except you use it, you don't master it. Except you apply it, you don't know it. Except you have exercised yourself in them, it looks always new and always very, very strange unto you. I encourage you today, Instead of shining away from the battle, put on the old armor and take on unto you the weapons that the Lord provides and see how God will show you victory in spiritual warfare. Now, the Bible says, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the trembling and harp. I'm dealing with the weapon of praise right now in dealing with the devil. Now, he said, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. What does praise do in dealing with spiritual warfare? Now I realize and I discover that one of the weapons, strategies the devil uses against the believer in spiritual warfare is discouragement and is depression. Ever before the devil can possess a man, the first thing he does, he tries to obsess him. He tries to excite Excite him so that he can cut him down and bring him in depression. And when he has discouraged and depressed a man, he goes on to oppress him. When he has successfully oppressed a life for long, he goes ahead to possess him if he is able. Now, so we realize that many, many times the devil wants to remove joy from your life. He wants to remove your joy, the joy of your salvation. He wants to remove the praise of God from your mouth. Many times, several of you understand what I'm saying. The devil wakes you up with depression. You just look moody and get discouraged. And the things that you will have done, even prayer, you won't be able to pray. You just find yourself just being moody, just getting offended at everything. It's one strategy of the devil. When brother Nehemiah was building the, you know, the walls of Jerusalem, one of the strategy of the devil against him was the fact of discouragement. Sambala, Tobiah, and uh, Gashem, they gather together and say, wait in the Ndusef. Even the thing they are building, if a spider should fall on it, it will fall flat. Just to discourage them. Just to make them lose sense as if they are not achieving anything at all. The devil loves to do that. The devil loves to remove joy and music from your mouth. The devil loves to remove, you know, 
your confidence in God by making you moody. And when a man succumbs to depression, Kai is terrible. All the truth of the word of God you know, all the revelation of the word of God, and all the scriptures that Jesus has put in your life, they all seem to be forgotten when you are depressed. I know several of you that are listening to me. You are in that kind of situation. It just looks as if you are a sadist. It just looks as if nothing goes well with you. Now what did God say? What is the weapon of our warfare in that matter? How do we deal with it? God says, look, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. When the devil is attacking you with depression, stand up to praise the Lord. Stand up to sing a song unto the Lord. Remember what God has done for you in time past. Recall all the blessings of the Lord and arise to praise Him. Psalm 107 says, Oh, that man will praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works uh, to, you know, to the children of, of men. If you will learn to recall all that God has done for you, you will soon discover that God had been faithful and that the situation is not as bad as the devil was trying to paint it. Now, praise is a weapon. Nehemiah said, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Many, many times, and if you read uh, Philippians chapter 4, he said, Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, do what? Rejoice. Now, many, many times, the devil will like to draw you away and show you reasons why you should cry. Reasons why you should weep. Reasons why you should be discouraged. But then, the Bible says, rise up. Encourage yourself in the Lord. You remember... In the art of battling, even brother David, he came under this attack. Now when he went out on a battle, before he came back, oh, the enemy had come and they have invaded his camp and carried away even his wives and the wives of all that were with him. And everybody started crying. They lifted up their voices and started crying and said, oh, our own don't finish. Our life is confused. And everybody was crying. But do you know what David did? Weeping will break your life. I know it. Weeping will break your heart. You won't go anywhere. Many, many times, if you allow women to start weeping around you, you will lose your battle. You will lose your battle. They start doing their eyes here and there. No. David moved himself away. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. He must have raised a song. He must have taken his tambourine and begin to praise the Lord. I believe you can wake up early in the morning. 4 a.m., 5 a.m., Begin to praise the Lord. Raise a song and begin to dance before the Lord. And as you begin to dance, the devil knows that you are dealing with him with a weapon that he could not counter counteract. The weapon, that weapon is mighty through God. But don't forget, praise is only mighty through God. There are some men that are trying singing as a psychology. If it is not through God, you are wasting your time. Some people think that, well, let's go and dance disco. So that we forget our problems. Sorry. Singing outside God will only bring more sorrow to your heart. Because when you are finished singing, your trouble returns with you. But we are talking of praise through God. Praise in the presence of God. And he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, do what? Rejoice. Rejoice. When a man begins to praise the Lord. When a man begins to rejoice. The devil now knows that, yes, I can't touch his heart again. Now, let's see some few issues where God used this weapon of praise. Remember, when the battle of Jericho was very, very fierce, what did God tell his, his children to do? They shouldn't worry themselves. They should just go around and shout. They should just give a shout of victory. And a shout of victory. And as they started shouting, shouting and rejoicing, the wall of Jericho fell. I'd like you to know today, maybe you have tried prayer, you have tried uh, crying, you have tried weeping, and the devil remain adamant over your life. Why don't you try praise? Why don't you stand up from where you are and say, I will praise the Lord anyhow. I will praise the Lord, come what may. I will sing unto the Lord. I will rejoice in the Lord my God. By the time you begin to use the weapon of praise, the enemy begins to run back because it's a mighty weapon. Now remember when Jehoshaphat was facing the battle of three nations. They came against him as if they were going to kill him. 
and you know what God says? They go down on this battle. It's not your battle. It's my battle. I'm going to fight it for you. And when they got there, you know what they did? Uh, Joshua just appointed a group of choir with tambourines and with guitars and with instrument of ten strings in their hands. Those that don't have the artificial instrument of ten strings, I can I can assure you all of you. You have your ten fingers on your two hands. Those are the instrument of ten strings. You could clap your hands and make, you know, make music unto the Lord. Make melody unto the Lord in your heart. And they gathered together. And they began to sing. You know what they were singing? Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. For his steadfast love endures forever. For his steadfast love endures forever. For his steadfast love endures forever. And as they kept singing that song. God sent confusion to the camp of the enemy. They began to shoot themselves. They killed themselves. Each time the children of God are rejoicing in their camp, there is confusion in the camp of the enemy. That's what I want to say to you. Each time people are singing and praising the Lord, the devil is confused. You know why? The devil feels that, what has God done again? That these people are rejoicing. They must have conquered. And then the devil goes back and says, you see, I am losing. I am losing. Each time a child of God stands up rejoicing, the devil is crying. Because every time you come out victorious, rejoicing, you remind the devil that he is a failure. I want you to never succumb to depression. Wake up every day. Take a song. Take a song. And you know what I discovered? You cannot sing sorrowing. I discovered that by the time you are praising the Lord, the sorrows of your life will begin to disappear. You can't frown when you are rejoicing before the Lord. And I want to say to you, it's a mighty weapon. It's a very great weapon that God has placed in our hands. May God help you as you make use of that particular weapon. Now let me remind you again. How did Gideon fight the battle of the Midianites? The Bible says he gathered 20, 32,000. God said, I don't need 32,000. 300 was enough. And what were they going to do? They were only going to blow the trumpet. The sword of God, the sword of Gideon. The sword of God, the sword of Gideon. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. And as they were singing that song and marching forward, oh, the devil, in the camp of the Philistines, I mean, in the camp of the, of the, of the Midianites, they were confused. They started shooting themselves. All the children of Israel needed to do was to continue to wave their hand. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. And as they put in music, as they put in clapping, as they put in trumpet, oh, the devil got confused. The sword of God. Can you join us today? And stand up wheresoever you are and sing and worship the Lord. And tell yourself, look, this battle is not my battle. God is going to fight it for me. Have you been sick for some days? I want you to try praise right now. Stand up where you are. Stand up from your sick bed and sing to the Lord. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for God, our God, is good. Remind yourself how good God is. Remember the kind of thing he has done in your life. And as you do that, God. In his eternal wisdom. God in his power will keep you going. Now look at that. There is none of you who cannot sing. That weapon, you don't need to be 20 years old in the Lord before you know how to sing. Whatsoever. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Construct a new song to the Lord. You don't need to go to school or music before you know how to sing. Raise a song right now in your heart. That particular weapon you also have the privilege. I also have the privilege. Lift up yourself wheresoever you are now. If you are there with your wife, why don't you try praising the Lord? If you are there with your colleagues, why don't you try to praise the Lord? If you are there as a group listening to this message, why don't you bow your head right now and take a song and march around and march around over the head of the devil? It was hallelujah that broke the walls of Jericho and every wall Standing against you now, every barrier, every barrier of impossibility, rise up and praise the Lord right now. Is your business trying to fall? Stand up and praise the Lord over it. 
why you move out right now in your car? Why don't you get on your steering with a song in your mouth? Why don't you take a song in your mouth and begin to worship the Lord and begin to praise the Lord? Let me repeat that scripture to you. He said, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. This kind of singing doesn't have to be in your heart. Don't be afraid that you are disturbing anybody. I don't believe you disturb anybody when you are rejoicing. I don't believe that songs of joy is a disturbance to anybody. I wish all our environment is filled with beautiful singing about the glory of God. You know, when you start singing, you turn the life of other people around too. You make them happy too. Some don't want to laugh, but when they see you laughing, they like to smile with you. That is the matter. Why don't you allow the joy of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord, to beam out of your life? So that several people that are meeting you this day, they also share in the joy of the Lord. May the joy of the Lord come on you. Now, that's a weapon. The weapon of praise. When you have tried every other thing, try praise. Are you hearing me? There is no situation that is beyond anything. Let me remind you the last thing. When our brother, our brother, Paul and Silas were thrown into the prison. They were bound. And what a situation. They should have been crying. They should have said, oh God, why did you do my life like this? They would have been crying. But no, no, no. They refused to give the glory to the devil. You know what they did? They just stood up there. They lit up their hands. They said, conquer us. We are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus. We are more than conquerors. And as they were singing and dancing around and stamping their feet on the ground, do you know what happened? The chains broke. Not only from them, it broke from every prisoner. Your praise will not only set you free, it will set every prisoner around you free. Try the weapon of praise today. It's a weapon that God has given us. Mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Stronghold of depression, stronghold of confusion. The, the, the praise of God in your mouth is going to deal with it. May God help you as you try this weapon. It's an offensive weapon. The devil doesn't like it. God bless you.